web. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Well, if you go through that building, I'll have to catch you on the other side. Smarty pa Smarty Pants Okay Bye bye Oh god I lost track of it No not really I need to know where he's going. I'm so curious now. Hey Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand. Oh, and Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. We just happened to hear news about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in DC. They would have given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state, Still and then we never would have found it. In the end, it would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault, along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag, buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. Right, that would have been its fate. Instead, it traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. Things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the United States trying to track down San Rouge. We can't let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. This is my kind of tail -ish. One lollipop, two lollipops, three lollipops. Don't mind me, Zach. This is how I wake myself up. He's no reason. Zach, you're a coffee person, right? No sugar, only milk. Yes, I'm completely with you on that one. If you cross the river, I'm gonna be in trouble. Were you thinking about Galima too? And all the other women we've seen so far on our travels across the states? Zach. I'm right, aren't I? This is a vast country, incredibly vast. And it's mostly composed of mountains, deserts, and farmland, with small towns scattered about here and there. That's how America looks to me. Compared to the scale of this entire country, New York, Chicago, and LA are all microscopic. Sometimes they even feel like figments of my imagination. Think back to what Las Vegas looked like when we were driving up I-15. It was a mirage. 
TV and movies dress up those mirages and broadcast them to people all around the world. Meanwhile, American women become fascinated by the gorgeous city lights and are drawn toward those illusions. The very same women who were chosen as prom queens in their small towns. In the end, all they find are ghosts. Once their eyes adjust to that blinding light, they realize there's nothing but vanity and the lust surrounding them. And they finally figure out that it was all in their heads. Then they quickly try to satisfy themselves with something else. Drugs. And drugs are the gateway to a whole pantheon of crimes. Zach, remember what you told me once? The women who turn to crime aren't the evil ones. The drugs aren't evil either. They're nothing but... Oh, let's flat navigator day. Bridges? Why? I've become obsessed with bridges, Zach, and there's no turning back now. Remember what we saw on our way here? Back when we were driving that hybrid car before we switched over to the skateboard. We passed over the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Remember the sudden downpour that made it impossible for us to see the road? The rain was so torrential that we couldn't see more than a few miles ahead of us. I'm sure local drivers are used to that sort of thing. They were all going normal speeds. I bet that scene reminded you of a certain film, or perhaps a certain person. Violent City, 1970, directed by Sergio Salima. I only ever saw it on TV when I was a kid, so I don't remember it very well. But I definitely remember that it featured a bridge, a long bridge, during the New Orleans part. That's the one thing I remember. That bridge must have been the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. And the film starred Charles Bronson, Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. What an amazing sound. You couldn't possibly find another man whose name matches his appearance so perfectly. Yes, yes, of course I know that Charles Bronson isn't his real name. Charles Dennis Buczynski. That's his real name. But he's Bronson. Period. Zach, what's your favorite Bronson film? Hmm? Death Wish? The Magnificent Seven? Rider on the Rain? Or Farewell Friend? They're all masterpieces. But to me, his greatest work lies elsewhere. That's it, Zach. No wonder we get along so well. I don't care what anyone else says. His greatest film by far is 10 to Midnight, 1983, directed by J. Lee Thompson. There's no realism to be found in this movie, but that's what makes it so great. One might even call it a fantasy masterpiece. It was certainly filled with unprecedented fantasy compared to other police thrillers, that's for sure. You know, Zach, I'm suddenly getting the urge to watch it again. Let's hurry up and solve this case so that we can go rent the DVD. The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and under. It really seemed like you knew who Galena Clarkson was. Well, I've never actually talked to her, but it's a small town. Pretty much all folks know who the Clarksons are. And Galena's supposed to be extra scary compared to the rest of them. Back when we saw her in town, I felt like she was glaring right at me. 
So I got real scared. No one will come out and say it, but I'm pretty sure they're all relieved that she was the killer. We're lucky the killer ended up being a member of the Clarkson family. Otherwise, the whole town would have turned into a battlefield. You've got a point, but did everyone really hate her that much? They didn't hate her. She hated them. She had this real peculiar way of treating people. I don't know how to describe it. Contemptful? Yeah, I guess that's it. She never opened up to anyone in town. She was rich, beautiful, and wanted to become an actress. So she went to a metropolitan city to refine herself. There's always a chance that people like her may develop prejudices towards those who stay in the countryside. A big chance, even. But just because a person has prejudices doesn't mean they'll go out and murder people. That's where my doubt lies. Was there any sort of omen which made people happy that she was the killer instead of someone else? I'm just telling you how I feel. How am I supposed to know if everyone else in town felt the same way? I never thought she'd actually go and kill her own daughter, though. There it is, Zach. It appears that her attempt to kill me wasn't simply a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe she was sad. Sad? Perhaps. Instead of returning as a star, she was forced to come home after her dreams were crushed. That certainly sounds like a sad story, doesn't it, Zack? No, Agent York. Not that kind of sad. The kind of sadness that keeps folks away, hidden behind her attitude. Is there a word for that? Maybe it ain't in her attitude or her words, but the way she appears. Yeah. It's in her eyes. They remind me of someone. Who? P.J. Clarkson? No, someone else. Hmm, I can't remember. That's okay, Patty. Just let me know if you happen to recall it later. Until then, Zack and I will help you think. By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? Oh, no. I just figured that since we're working together now, it'd be a good idea to learn a little more about you. Should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question? I feel like I heard a story about this sort of thing on the news once. There's a time and a place for everything. You know exactly who I am, and I've also introduced myself to your father. Besides, you're the one who said you wanted to come with me. I was just kidding, jeez. You're an <laughs> FBI special agent. Why would I ever need to worry? You shouldn't automatically trust someone just because they're an FBI special agent. One's profession and one's personality are completely separate things. For example, one special agent may fall spiritually in love with a genius criminal who enjoys the taste of human flesh. That's Hannibal. <laughs> you pulled that straight out of a movie. Just because it's a film doesn't mean it isn't deeply rooted in reality. You can't judge people solely based on where they work or how they look. You need to think hard and decide things for yourself. Hmm. Fine. So, allow me to ask you this. How do you feel about me? I don't know. I only just met you. <laughs> exactly. Now it sounds like you're thinking. You should never feel the need to force an answer out or pretend like you know something you don't. Zach, she's a good kid, isn't she? Honest and straightforward. Oh, wait, there's one thing <laughs> I can say. Oh. What? When you talk to yourself like that, it really creeps me out. Did you start doing that after you became an adult? Or have you just always done it? Either way, you should stop doing it. It's really weird and, like, makes me wince whenever I hear it. Ooh, Zach, did you hear that? No need to worry. Neither of us are weird, I can assure you of that. She's probably just having trouble finding the right word to describe us. No, I think I'll stop there. Wouldn't want her to think we're getting desperate. Like I said, it's really creeping me out. Now that? Is he done moving? I'll talk to him. Well, you romance. Yep, taller and taller, huh? Well, I'll continue to let you drive. What's this over here? Is everyone just doing this today? Just floating in 